and Anne, and just as I promised, we are going to go over Beautiful Creatures, the book versus the film. Now, the book was written by Garcia and Stoll, um, and the book was amazing. Um, I loved it. They're one of my biggest pet peeves is being able to find them. Um, the mistakes in the writing, um, such as spelling or grammar. But besides that, because that's actually the editor's job, which means they really need to look at talking to their editor. Besides that, it was really a good book. I actually enjoyed it. Um, it was funny. It had a lot of romance, the characters, the plot was beautiful. It was a beautiful book and I personally really did enjoy it um, in comparison to um, one of the things they've compared it to in here is a Twilight. And yeah, since Twilight and True Blood. Um, now, I personally have only watched a little bit of the True Blood and I wasn't a very big fan of it mainly because I don't know why, but the actress that plays Suki actually kind of annoys me. But um, this was a way better book than Twilight. And I believe it's because it wasn't as cheesy or, ooh, look, I glitter in the dark. Um, sure, they did say the whole, oh, she's not a witch, she's a caster. But actually, that sounded really a lot better than going, hey, I'm a vampire that glitters in the sun. And... That, in my personal opinion, is what killed Twilight for me. Um, but the casters, the entire group of casters, even into the demon lore of it, was beautifully done, and I really did truly enjoy it. Um, the going between the different types of casters that kind of made it go into a little bit of, like, myth, um, such as Ridley being a siren, or... Um, Lena being a natural, it just really was beautifully done. And I loved and enjoyed the book. So when I went to see the movie, I expected amazing. I expected it to be, oh my gosh, this is really, really good. But it wasn't. The movie changed way too much. And I understand changing some things. I really, truly do, because every movie can't be exact. It's the whole point of them turning a book into a movie, is to make things a little bit different, to change things up a little, to give you a few extra surprises or twists. And I understand that from an artist's perspective. But when you change it to the point to where it isn't the book at all, there was maybe a few parts that were correct. Even the beginning of the movie and be warned, this vlog, unlike my last one, is going to carry some spoilers because in order to talk about book versus movie, I actually have to mention things. In the movie, in the very beginning, Ethan goes on his run, which we all know he likes going on his runs. He was doing it in the book quite often. He goes on his run and then he trips and falls and finds a locket. Um, I'm sorry, that's not how it happened. They specifically found that together for a reason because that's how they found out when they touched it together that they were going to start seeing things. He didn't find the locket before he found Lena. He found Lena and they found the locket. That kind of peeved me off a little bit just because the locket was supposed to be something very important, um, Genevieve's locket. So the fact that they completely changed that within the first 30 seconds of the film really made me upset. And I don't even think he found it by the right grave. I think he was at the grave site where his own mother was buried. And that was like a complete switch. Like, why is it not by Greenbrier? Like, why was he... And I can't remember specifically because I did watch the film such a while back, but I believe that's where he found it, is just after he went and ran past his mother's grave. Now, other parts that I was really disappointed in, they really honestly could have kept Boo Radley. That, in particular, really makes me mad. Get a dog, name it Boo Radley. Like, it is not that hard. I realize you can't have, like, a wolf on set, but I'm pretty certain that a black husky or even just any general, a, a black wolfhound, um, they're Irish, the Irish wolfhounds, that would have totally sufficed for me for being Boo Radley, and I would have totally loved it. 
that would have made the film just that much better. It needed Boo Radley. It honestly did. Um, the killing of Macon. How many of you are disappointed in that? Because I know I cried, not because Macon died in the film, but because of how they killed him. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. I hope Jeremy cried about it too. And it was just such a disappointment. You're waiting for this entire fight scene between Seraphine and Lena, and you're waiting for all of that action. And they like cut it into like such, such horrible bits and pieces that you didn't even recognize the fight scene when it was starting. And you knew that Link was going to end up shooting somebody because obviously Ridley's been trying to train him to have this little bullet and to actually load it without realizing he's loading it. That's fine. I realize he's going to end up shooting somebody. The fact that he ended up shooting Ethan and killing Macon, that wasn't, that wasn't how it was supposed to go at all. Seraphine made the killing of Ethan personal. It was for a personal reason. That alone in the book was how it was supposed to be. It was a personal kill because she believed Ethan was in the way of her getting a hold of Lena and bringing her to the dark. And that right there was the entire reason that Ethan even got killed. There was no other reason. It wasn't, and, and they made it so impersonal by using Link to do it. And then I understand Macon being switched around. That right there was fine. You know what? I was okay with that because Macon is the one that ends up dying. But the fact that it wasn't Seraphine that killed Ethan and henceforth then killed Macon made it completely impersonal, even to Lena. How was Lena supposed to be overly upset about it if... It wasn't her mother that did it. It wasn't her mother. And we even saw Link was upset, scared. He thought he was going to get killed. I'm sorry, Lena. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. She gets all angry, flings him back, and he runs off. Um, I'm sorry. She wasn't supposed to be mad at Link at all because Link wasn't supposed to have been the one to do it. She was supposed to be mad at her mother. And she still was because obviously everybody knows that Seraphine was controlling Ridley and Ridley was controlling Link. But the fact that they just changed it up so much that it was no longer a personal I hate my mother because she killed, she tried to kill my boyfriend and ended up killing my uncle instead. It was a big difference. It really was. It changed the way I felt Lena would feel about Seraphine in the future. And in the book series, she feels a certain way about it that isn't going to end up being in the movie because of how they portrayed it. Um, in the later movies, I don't know what they're going to do. I personally haven't read the other books. I haven't had a chance to. I will be reading the other books because the books are actually really, really good. Um, the films, however, I really hope the second film is a lot better because to me, this first film was a disappointment. Even the end of him going off to college and her wiping his memory of him never remembering anything. That never happened in the book. She didn't wipe his memory and make him forget her and forget everything just to protect him. No, she didn't do that. I'm sorry. He didn't have to start driving off to go to college and then turn around and suddenly go, oh, Lena, Lena, and scream at the end. No, I'm sorry. It didn't happen that way. She never erased his memory. They were in with this together together till the end. They decided that. That completely changed their relationship too because now you've got Lena's, in the movie, Lena's okay with being deceptive towards Ethan. And in the books, sure, maybe she kept a few secrets, but if he asked, she told him. And it was as simple as that. She never took away his memory. She never like, out and out right blatantly lied and that in my opinion completely changed the movie from the book. Lena isn't the same character in the movies as she is in the book and I hope you all agree with that. She's not the same. Um, in my opinion she's darker in the movies and not to say that she was going to go light in the first book in my opinion or dark in the first book. The fact is is in the first book she is in that in-between stage. She honestly is 
And in the movie, she does not, in my opinion, feel like an in-between stage. She feels like she's going dark. I felt like she was going to go dark. And I realized that was supposed to be the point, is she feels like she's going to go dark, so she's going to steal the moon and hide it and all that. But the fact that she was leaning towards dark more than she was towards the light is what didn't didn't match up because in the book she's she's in that in-between stage where she does equally good and equally bad things. I felt like she was doing a lot more bad things than she was good. And she's a different person. She really is from book to movie. They changed a lot and I'm not gonna buy the movie. I'm not. Um, I wasn't gonna go see it again in theaters when somebody else wanted to see it with me. I might rent it or like share a rent, you know, like my friend pays half for the rent and I ha I pay the other half because it really was a disappointing movie in comparison to the book. The book was wonderful. The movie, not so much. I was very disappointed. And the fact that they got rid of an entire character, Amma, and you see, I can't even remember the character's name because they cut her out of the movie. Marion, I know it starts with an M, but they cut the entire librarian out and made Amma into both characters. And I realized that that made it simpler, but from what I have seen, they both play completely different roles and they both have completely different parts and different abilities and different everything. The fact that they mashed those two characters together where it, could slightly make sense. I just really wish that they would have, that they would have kept some things instead of deleting everything. They got rid of Boo already. They killed Macon in a completely unpersonal way. Um, they took away Ethan's memories. Ethan found the locket by himself. They just changed so much. And even to the Valentine's Day dance or the winter dance, they didn't go to the dance at all. Why? Why didn't they go to the dance? Um, that was supposed to be a very major part for both Lena and Ethan. The whole point of Ethan and Lena going to the dance was for Lena to start feeling like a normal girl because she never got to do normal things. Um, she'd never been to a school dance. She had never gone out to a movie theater with friends. The whole point of certain things was for her to be able to live this normal life that she didn't think she was ever going to get to have. She's counting down the numbers on her hand and she needed some normalcy to keep her mind off of the numbers getting smaller and smaller. And they didn't even give her that in the movie. And that was something Ethan had been trying so hard to give her. Like he was even taking advice from Link to give her that. Um, Larkin, I'm not sure if Larkin's gonna end up being a dark caster or not, because in the movie, he didn't end up being dark at the end. And maybe they're saving that for movie two, is he just suddenly pops out and does something random, but the whole fact that he wasn't evil right then is, uh, kind of interesting, because he was supposed to have you know, come out of his little good shell and been like, hey, look at me, I'm a bad guy. And he didn't. So I'm not sure if they're going to end up leaving him as a light caster or if they're going to end up turning him dark at all. We'll have to wait for the next movie, obviously. Um, which means that the second book could be completely different. And if the second movie is actually a lot better, not because it's following the books anymore because we all know the book is out the door. They aren't following the book. They they might be partially in some way, but they really just honestly aren't following the same format. They've changed a lot. There are no demons, as we've all noticed in the movie. So if the second movie is going to be a lot different from the second book, that's fine. They just need to make it better. They need to make it less choppy. Um, when they make their own script, it needs to be a full script, not, oh, we're gonna take bits and pieces and then leave you some holes and you're gonna have to fill in the blanks. Now, I go to a movie to not fill in the blanks. I go into a movie to watch the movie, not to sit there 
and try to figure out what happened between point A and point B by myself. Now, when it's a mystery movie, sure, that's fun. We all like to try to guess who the murderer is. But this wasn't a mystery movie. This was a movie based off of a book. And if I have to try to guess what's happening between point A to point B to point C, that is not enjoyable. So second movie needs to be better done. The actors, great, loved them. They can keep their actors. Beautiful actors. I honestly said that in the first vlog. The actors made this movie. But the scriptwriter really needs to reconsider how he writes his script and they'll make it a lot, a lot less choppy. And that is my personal opinion. Don't be afraid to go ahead and post in the comments your feelings, um, your opinions. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this film. This is Keelan Ann, and I will be talking to you again another time.